Others may benefit and we may grow thereby. To God be the glory for this day he's given us. Amen. Maybe it has been an eventful day for you. No matter what has come your way, God isn't is good. God good? He's good yes, all he the is. time and he's worthy to be praised. We salute the saints of the Most High. Amen. That means everything in the eyes of God. So as we look to him tonight together, as we go forth in this most important part of the service, because it plays a part with our worship, it helps us continue to be found in worship. Amen. But it is the hearing of the word that it all gets started for us. So that's why we designate and declare and decree this to be the best part of in this service. Amen. Is the preaching and the hearing of the word of God. Thank God for everything that takes place within the service. But all oh, that word. Amen. Is what we're saved by. The word is what we're delivered by and healed by. We grow by it. And I mean to tell you, it is our life. So because of that, Father God in heaven, we thank you tonight as we have assembled ourselves together with those of like mind, obtained like precious faith. We come tonight as a servant of the Most High that you might use us for your glory to deposit, to minister, to speak into the lives of the hearers on tonight. That they will be enriched, edified, built up, and strengthened. To go forth in the calling where well, you call them unto. That they be mindful of the promises, O oh God, that you've spoken concerning each and every last one of us. That we, with an intensity and a longing and desire, that this message will give us, O oh God, to pan even the more. Build up Zion, build up the church like never before. Make it what you want it to be, that it can rise up in times like these. In the midst of adversity, trouble, tests, and trials, magnifying and praising you through it all, that you might get the glory and that all eyes don't be on us, but they be all upon you. These things we pray and ask in Jesus' name that you might have your way in the word tonight. Let it be a living word that we speak that will cause man to live in the, in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said amen. 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 We thank God for you. Amen. That's right. Bless him and bless him and praise him. Amen. The comfort of your home, wherever you may be, you that's in the sanctuary, hey, magnify him for he is your strength. Know that the Lord, he is God and it is he that have made you and not you yourself, not we ourselves. Know this is the Lord's doing. God has not forgot about you. Amen. And what you might think, amen, sometimes because you get caught up in it, then it's too much. But I got news I got to tell you tonight. It's not bigger than the God that has called you out. It's not bigger than your father, God. Amen. The thing is a small thing in the sight of God. And if you can look beyond it and look unto the author and finisher of your faith, you, you also will soon see that all things work together for the good. Who are the called according to his purpose? The Lord know what he's doing. That's why I mean for us to get involved with him. Go after him that he can make known to you his mind. That you might get a confidence down in the sanctum of your soul that everything is going to be all right. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Come on tonight with me into the gospel of John. Amen is where we're going to preach from John chapter 1. Sister Tony is going to read for me some reading scriptures. Amen. That I want her uh, on tonight to read for me. And if you could, amen, that we won't um, praise God, bombard you with a lot. But I promise you, I just, whatever the verse is, give me that one scripture. Amen. And this one is, the first one is going to be 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Okay. And then the next one is going to be Matthew 13 and 18. Then we're going back to 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. Matthew 13 and 8. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. I'm giving to you that have tuned in. Amen. By the way, internet, whether it be YouTube or Facebook, write these down. And as always, we admonish you as we preach, go back and look at these scriptures. Amen. Just don't hear the message and just say, I'm done. I got it. Go read, amen, that that you hear preached unto you and watch what that do in your life. Amen. So Corinthians 4 and 7, I gave you, amen, didn't do Philippians 4 and 13. And then Colossians 1 and 13. I promise you tonight, we just did some things that the Lord will have us 
underscoring you here in tonight. Amen. The Lord lay upon our heart to teach and to preach unto you the subject and topic of tonight. Teaching and everything that we say will be centered around. Know who you are if you are a child of God. Hmm? Tell yourself, know who you are. Know who you are is what this is all about. If there's ever been a time, amen, for those that have called upon the name of Jesus, that have given them their life, all the heart, soul, and strength, and mind. For you to know who you are in spite of your present circumstance, condition, adversity, trouble, the event that might have taken place. You got to know who's your, who's you, who's you belong to. You got to know who you are. And when you know who you are, that is not a demon or devil in hell that can prevail against you. Because now are you that have been born again of the incorruptible seed. Now are you the sons and daughters of God. Hmm? Who has been forgiven of all your wrongdoing, all your trespasses, all your wickedness, all your disobedience, all of your rebellion. Hmm? Amen. That he forgave you through them somewhere never to remember them any longer. So it's so important for you to come quickly to understand who you are, what he's put in you, who's on your side in times like these that he can get the glory out of your living. Somebody say amen. amen. I want Sister Tony to begin reading for me. Get that verse started at 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, mm -hmm. if any man be in Christ, yes. he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now look, the Bible said, God said, Jesus said, the Holy Ghost, all scriptures are given by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. I mean to tell you, he said it, the one that's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man he should repent. He said, look, if any man be in Christ, hmm? I mean to tell you, it don't make no difference what you did, what wrong you did. If he gave, forgave you, who is anybody to hold against you? He justified you. He forgave you. The blood's been applied to you. He died for you. So it makes no difference how the folks see you. It makes no difference what the devil say to your mind or what he brings back to you. If any man be in Christ, the Bible declared in sin, he is not trying to be. He is a new creature. And my God, if you know you knew, you don't have to do the things of the old. And so tonight as we preach this down into your soul, that your inner man, amen, would rise up, I mean to God, amen, in the spirit of Christ like never before, that you might fight the good fight of faith, that you might come on through whatever it is you got to come through. You may be sitting in that lion, that lion's den. You might be sitting in a boxed in place, but God is greater than that box. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He got somebody on his side. The new creature is not by himself. The new creature have a heavenly host. The new creature, amen, got power with God. The new creature got something great on the inside of them. And it's for you, sign, and it's for every believer to come to know who you are in Christ. That when the enemy comes in and try to tempt you, if you be, you got 
to know you a child of God. And when you know you a child of God, you don't have to do the things you used to do because you are now engaged in a new life. You are a new creature in a new land. You in a new place. My God, you're not in the barrel of sin. You're not in the monkey miry clay. You are now in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let, let me just stop there. Amen. So the Bible declared in the clean. Amen. That if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things passed away, and behold, now just watch. Behold, all things become new. If the old things pass away, and that's what's behind me, and I'm going forward, don't let no man, don't let no woman tell you, you got to keep walking like you walked before Christ came into your life. Because when he called you out, when he called you out of Egypt, called you out of your abundance, it called you out of to take you into. And yes, that promised land is Christ. That promised land is the, that land that flows with milk and honey. Amen. I mean to tell you what God said. Out in the wilderness, I call you that we might have a feast. I want to sit down and you sup with me and I sit with you. Amen. In Christ, all these things take place because he is a fulfillment of the shadow of that which was to come. And it has been fulfilled. Now, it makes no difference how you feel because we don't walk by what we feel. It makes no difference what they say about you because you got to go with what the Bible has said about you. You got to learn, amen, to testify. You know, I know religion and theology and people have taught us, churchy, have taught us how to testify in the service. You've seen somebody stand up and after they have talked uh, and they done did it for so long, you really thought there was a testimony. But what I found out, amen, you don't know how to testify until you can tell the devil who you are. Until you can tell the devil what God has done for you. And it don't have to be in the midst of people that's just great on the gravy train. You got to learn how to do this when you by yourself and when he is attacking your mind, attacking your house, attacking your body, attacking, amen, your inspiration. When he come to steal, kill, and destroy or fight you while you're fighting the good fight of faith, you got to know without a shadow of a doubt, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. I mean to tell you, the church better come on here. Amen. Because I'm telling you, somebody can get their sins forgiven and you can keep looking at them like they once used to do. But God ain't looking like that. They're a new creature. I keep telling you when the homosexual come in and the lesbian come in and when the drunkard, the drug addict, when the gangbanger, when the thug, it makes no difference when the racist come in. You better get your mind together if you are a new creature. Because you got to see them the way God see them. And if God said, if any man be in Christ. Let God be God and let everybody else be alive. He said he's a new creature, then you know what? He is new. Somebody say amen. So it's a Tony Graham for me, Matthew 13 and 8, because these are some solid scriptures. See, the Lord has begun to give us how to teach unto you that you might grow that by, that you might come from the level of being children. Understanding that your sin has been forgiven. You should praise the Lord. You should bless the Lord at all times because of the deliverance that He's walked within your life. But you gotta have something with that. You gotta know it's with purpose. Be thankful, be grateful. Lean on your father. Know he's Father God. Amen. And as you go with him, learn how to walk in obedience. Don't be dibber dabbling like no lightning blood. Sometimes walk in darkness, then you're trying to walk in light. Don't work like that. Take if you mind being Christ, he's a new creature. Old things passed away. He don't walk in the old thing. Things. He's walking in the newness of life and the new life that you have now you have victory you have dominion you have power you got to come into a knowledge of the enemy is going to try to trick you he's going to try to deceive you but you got to know without a shadow of a doubt I am an heir joined in with Christ I'm a son of God he chose me my family might not have chose me but God chose me the community might not have chose me my high school might not have chose me I mean your students might not have chose you your peers but if God has chosen you, you are special in his eyes. I mean, if he went through all of what he went through for you, it makes no difference what other folks think about you. You should fix the rest of your life and let your mind be on pleasing the one that have called you out of the darkness 
into the marvelous light. So we're going to learn how whatever age you may be in the spirit in the Lord. As children, as young babes, uh, children, you come in. Now we're going to graduate to young men because the children can look at those that's gone before them and see others being examples. See, we need young men that's an example that have understood how to overcome. Amen. Not fall down to it. And, you know, we all fall down when we get up. Go on with that song because that ain't even gospel. That ain't even scripture. Amen. He didn't tell you to fall down. Brother, yeah. He said, now unto him who's able to keep you from falling. That's a young man's state. He come to understand I got power with God. I don't have to fall down. I don't have to succumb to what the devil throw. Amen. Because something great happened in your life when you received the hearing of the word. We keep telling men and women you got to be gotten with an incorruptible seed. This word which we preach is Jesus Christ, the incorruptible. Amen. The one, amen, that put on in, uh, I, I mean, his, that mortal, incorruptible, incorruptible. Amen. We saw where the grave couldn't hold him. We believe, therefore we live now. The grave couldn't hold him. He sit on the right hand with all power in his hand. And he's giving power unto those that will receive. So tonight, what are you saying, preacher? If you receive what we preach in tonight, my God, that thing you've been struggling with, that that adversity, that thing that's been buffing in your mind, it seems like that bondage that don't want to let you loose. When you understand and you shake yourself and learn how to shake it off, amen, that it don't get the best of you and put on the Lord Jesus Christ, put on your strength and learn how to walk up right before him and give him your heart, give him your life, give him your mind. It will hit you like never before. I am a son of God and I don't have to live beneath my my privileges. I want to bring something to your attention in Matthew 13 and 8. Read. Mm -hmm. But other fell into good ground uh -huh. and brought forth fruit. Yes. Some in hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Uh huh. Now look at here. That's Matthew 13 and 8. Yes, sir. Amen. Keep reading because I want to get to the good ground. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. Mm -hmm. And the disciples came and said unto him Hold on one second sister Tony Because I think it's up above beneath us, It's up, us above that Y'all hold on and wait with us Amen I, I got you in Matthew the 13th chapter right Want me to go to 3 Matthew 13 is where I got you at mm -hmm. And I had you start at verse 8 mm -hmm. Amen Matthew 13 I'm sorry. You know what I wanted you to do? I want you to go Matthew 13 and 23. 23. All right. But that was some good stuff that you just got to read. Amen. Amen. And really go right on in. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? Since she did hit Matthew 13, 8, maybe the Lord have us go there anyway. Because what we're teaching unto you to now, we're seeking to build you up on your most holy faith. And so when she was at, when she said, but other fell into good ground and brought forth Psalm 100, Psalm 64, Psalm 34. And you know, sometimes we get, well, I just want to breathe. If it's 34, I'm good with it. No, you're not. Amen. You want the Psalm total. You want the complete. The completeness is 100. Amen. So the 34 is for the children. Amen. You begin to bring forth fruit as soon as you come in. Children bring forth 30 fold. Young men bring forth 60 fold. Uh, fathers, elders, those that grow up and come to the fullness and maturity of him bring forth 100. Amen. So you can't kick back the side and say, well, you go for that 100 and I'll stay over in the 30. No, no, no. God called you into the Holy of Holies too. In the Holy of Holies, on the outer courts, you got the 34. In the inner courts, you got the 64. But in the Holy of Holies, in that place is the 100 fold. Well, he's providing the way because there was a shadow of things to come. In Christ, in that spot where he designated to be the Holy of Holies, which is Jesus. When we in him, you're going to bring forth 100 Fold because 99 will not do. We are bringing forth 100. He said, Be ye therefore perfect because I'm perfect. I provided a way for you to do it so you can do all things through Christ that gives you strength. Somebody say amen. amen. She said to Tony, you started and stuff. I didn't even mean to go over that. Amen. But I want you to get over there for me in Matthew 13, the same chapter, and begin to read for me 
the 23rd verse. Now note now, because I'm teaching tonight to believers, I'm teaching to those that, that are questioned to go for God. They say, Lord, I want to go with you above all else. I'm willing to forsake all to follow you. Amen. This message on tonight, the Lord has given us to teach and preach into your heart that you might be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. So I just want her for me as she's reading now this parable of the soul. Amen. God begin to explain Jesus be explained to him because remember you got you got two types, you got three types of ground. You had the stony, and then also, amen, you had the one that was the thorny ground. And then what she's reading is the good ground. Because see, the real saints, the true worshipers of the Lord, they worship him in spirit and in truth. They have a ground that's good because it's important to get your ground right. And if you know your ground ain't right, then it's time to break it up, break up that folly ground. It's time to say, Lord, look, I'm tired of playing games. I should have never played them with you. I want to be real. And I can't be real unless you help me to be real. So you know what? Real quick and in the hearing, save me and deliver me. Get me out of this and this out of me that I can come on in and now become what you call me to become. Read for me, Sister Tony, verse 23. But he that receives seed into the good ground uh -huh. is he that heareth the word uh -huh. and understandeth it. My God. Which also beareth fruits yes. and bringeth forth some in hundredfold, mm. some sixty, Psalm 30. I told you that scripture that you hit over there in Matthew 13 and 8. Here we go, the 60, the 30, and the 100. Here we go, reading in 23rd. And then it comes back talking about Psalm 100 fold, Psalm 60, Psalm 30. Because when there's good ground, this is what happens. You develop. You start off with the 30, and as you begin to grow up, then you move off into the 60. And as you begin to continue in his word, and you grow thereby, then you get to a place where he can use you, that glorious church, in such a way that he calls y'all full and it becomes hundredfold. Amen. So what we find out is Jesus was explaining in these parables that the disciples will get a good understanding of the those that they would teach and preach to. Some are going to come in and their heart's not going to be too right. But they're going to come in and hear that word and because they got stoned and why it's just going to sit up there. Amen. I mean and, and they just going to get joyful but their hearts is stony. Amen. And after a little bit you'll find them just going to you know, get knocked on out. Amen. Because uh, in such a way because it's on stone if your heart is stone it can't get no root and so those are the people that's always getting saved all over again you know Catholic religion repent all day matter of fact they learn how to repent before they do it because they know they're going to do it amen they already got their mind set let me repent now somehow they think they're getting over on God I repent before I do it so when I do it I don't have to repent now you need to get your act together God is more wise than you me and everybody else all in one God know you can do better because he provided a better way for you. Amen. That is a stony heart when you think like that. And when preachers preach like that, their hearts is stoned too. I mean, they just stone hearted also because he ain't got nothing in them. They ain't got no root within them. Because anytime you get root, that means something is growing. If you can't get no root, that means you ain't growing. Amen. And it's imperative that you grow. Growing, growing means pro progression. Growing mean going from one place to another. Israel had to come out and get out of Egypt, go to another place. It's time to get to another height or another depth. You got to long for him. You got to pet for him. And so what I love about this you, amen, that we're seeking to encourage on tonight. The Bible said the one that received it upon the good ground, it talked about, I mean, he that heareth. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. He that heareth the word and understand it. No, now when you get a chance to go examine these scriptures, the only ground that understood it was the good ground. Because when you get understanding, you can keep dialogue. You can keep the word. David said, keep me understanding that I may keep, that I shall keep thy word. If I don't understand it, I, I mean, somebody can take it from me. If I don't understand it, I'm going to fail. I'm going to keep blooping and blundering. But all when you understand, two plus two is two. I, and t I, mean, I mean, you know, two plus two is four. I'm sorry. Amen. When you understand one plus one is two and two plus two is four and two times three is six. I don't care who comes in and say, you know, one plus one 
it's for. You're going to say, no, it's not. A little kid, once he know it and understand it, you can't trick him. You can't deceive him. But oh, that's because he's growing. He's getting root within him. You can't turn him. That's what time it is for the church to come to a place that you come to know so much about him that you will not doubt him no matter what devil come your way, challenge come your way, adversity, trouble, it makes no difference what the devil bring. You can stand boldly and flat foot and still say, him only shall I serve. And still say, God is a good God. And still say, in him I live, move, and have my being. I love it that it's like that because it ain't in the Cadillac. It ain't in the big car, the big houses, and the big bank account. It's in him we live. Move and have I been? I mean, it's in Him because of Him we have life. Not because that you're married, that you got children, amen, that you got a hundred thousand dollar job, that you make millions. Look, those millions didn't bring you to life. Jesus quickened you from your sins and your transgression. And when you got Him, you got all things that pertains to life, amen, to, to life. You got everything you need. To, that pertain to life and godliness. And so we find out, amen, as he wrote what he wrote and spoke what he spoke, amen, him, amen, that he with the word understanding it, all, which also bearing fruit. And bearing is TH. He don't bear it sometime. It's continuation. The good ground continues in the word. Jesus said, You are my disciples indeed. If you continue. And you gotta learn how to continue without getting interrupted. You gotta learn how to continue with that that comes to interrupt you. Don't interrupt you. Because when you learn how to prevail and get through things, you act stronger and stronger. Holding the word before you. Amen. Because it is your life. So look what he said here. Bringing forth some 100, some 60, some 30. We got, we got some growing, some moving to do. We rejoice that we can bring 30, but you're going to rejoice more when you get 60. And it don't stop right there. It gets better. Amen. As you're going into the honeyfold, then the Lord said, yes, sir. Amen. Here they are. They're ready to be offered up. I mean, I can use them for my glory. I can take them wherever I see fit. I can use them in the midst of whatever because they're not ashamed of me. They understand, amen, they are what they are. It's me that made them and they know it's not them themselves. They realize they can do all things through Christ uh, that gives them strength. They realize that any man be in Christ. He's a new creature. But the devil brought it to me. What I used to do, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So that means that this thought that's coming to me didn't come from God. If it didn't come from God, then Jesus was the example. Satan, get thee get be behind me. You speak not the things that be of God. And that's why we're telling people, you got to learn how to testify. Testify to who? You testify to the devil. Who you are because you know who you are. And when he come in and tell you, you can't you tell him my God said I can you a liar amen and the truth ain't never been in you amen I the Bible I've been told and I know it so because it's in my heart that I can do all things through Christ that give me the strength I mean I got some knowledge he built me up on my faith amen that all things are possible to them that believe oh I can let you know yeah I once was doing that but it wasn't me it was a sin that was in me and because I was messed up you orchestrated my life the prince and the the power of the earth drove me to do what I was doing. I didn't have my own thoughts. I took on yours and you defeated me. Now that I'm saved and born again and brought into the glorious gospel, the light of Jesus Christ, this word, now I realize I take on his thoughts and what he do to me you can't even compare. He don't hurt me. He don't drive me against my will. He don't disappoint me. He don't bring me down. He don't diminish me. He builds me. He loves me. He protects me. And since that is the reason him only shall thou serve. You had me at one time but you don't have me no more. And every time I hear you, you let me know you don't. Because when you did have me, you didn't tell me. Hey man, look here, you know you want to do it. You just drove me to do it. But ever since I've been saved, you got to come and try to, with deceit and try to make me feel like it's in me just because I hear you. But I hear the word of the Lord saying when Jesus was driven into the wilderness by the Spirit, led for me and everybody else that will believe upon him. 
to be tempted of the devil that he might be able to secure every believer and every man that believe upon him, every woman that believe upon him, that he might go through and render Satan powerless even before he hit the cross, even before he dropped down into the heart of the earth. He stripped that devil, that devil had no power over him because he came three times because all he got is three gates, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. And every time that my master, God himself, the one that was in the world and the world was made by him, every time he came, he said it is written. So what we doing tonight is trying to give you what's written so when the enemy come your way, you can say it's written. Amen. I don't live by bread alone. I don't live by what you're trying to get me to go back into. But I live by every word that he's spoken concerning me. And I'd rather live in his word because he let me know because of him I am somebody. Without him, I'm nobody. I'm back into the arms or the clutches of sin. But I might be in free. So if any man be in Christ, uh, he is a new creature. You got to learn how to stand fast in the liberty. What well, with Christ has made you free. And you do so knowing what's written of you. That's why we say it tonight and we preach it like this. Know who you are. Amen. So if you're one of the ones that received it upon good ground, the Bible say this, that one that received it upon good ground, number one, he understand it. He beareth fruit and he keep bringing forth fruit and he continues. Now, I ain't talking about nobody, but if you find yourself that not being, you examine the other ones about the stony ground and the thorny ground, and then you sit right there and be perfectly honest with God. And if you need a heart transplant, the best way to do it, amen, is to come clean and just say, Lord, save me, deliver me. Wash me all over that I don't be found like this no more. I need a heart transplant because when God give you a new heart and put within you a new spirit and save your soul, amen, look, you're going to get some root. Ain't nothing going to be stony about that heart. And then you ain't going to have no thorns in it that's going to choke it out because you don't have a mind to go out the deceitful and riches of the world. You're not caught up in the world. You want it out of the world. You want it out of that mess you was in. And the devil can't even make it look right. I don't care how you dress it up. You really it still stink, it's ugly, you don't want no parts of it, because you sit right there and say, devil, I see you, I don't care what costume you put on, my God is him only that I will not do, I am content with the one that paid the price for my soul. The devil ain't paid no price for you. Amen. I mean, he sought to steal man's soul. But God fixed it and got man back. And because you relieve the report one day, you are in the hand of the one that can't nobody snatch you out of. What are you saying? Well, I'm saying this. If you are a believer, you got to lay down your power. You got to give up your authority. You got to now no longer mind the things of God and walk back into bondage. Come on, say Amen. And I mean to tell you, I like why Paul put it because he told the church one place, amen, it's like the sow turning back, amen, to the mud or, 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 or the dog returning to his vomit. I want to make it explicit to you because don't nobody in their right mind go eat up vomit. Don't know, I mean, you're going to get clean and get clean and jump back in the mess you come out of. Your mind ain't right. Something ain't right with you. Amen. But when your mind is sound, you look at the devil and say, uh-uh, I don't want that. Amen. I almost didn't come out. You can't get your hands on me no more. Amen. You didn't You didn't finish me while you had me. You get no more opportunity because God is the best thing that ever happened to me. And when you learn how to testify what's written of you because you know who you are, that devil will tip on out of that service. He, because what you just did is start a testimony service and when you start telling the devil in your mind that he's coming to you with whatever he comes in you talk the things of God he will flee from you somebody say amen and so when she read over there about the sower look at here we're just underscoring building you up on your most holy faith that you might know who you are come on sister Tony give me 2 Corinthians 4 and 7 2 Corinthians 4 but we have this treasure in earth and vessels. Oh, Lord. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Mm. But we have this treasure. This treasure. Do you know who you are tonight? How special are you rich? <laughs> and you, you might not even have those stocks and bones. 
You might not even have a savings account like God. But you got a treasure that you can't even put a dollar value on. You got to know you are priceless because what's in you is priceless. You're not for sale. The devil can't offer you nothing because if you take it, you just cheated yourself. I mean, you got a treasure in your earthen vessel. The Bible said you didn't have to go get it. We have this treasure. The Lord gave Apostle Paul to view Christ being in you as a treasure. He's rubies, he's pearls, he's diamonds, riches, everything that's priceless. I mean to tell you, you know the way the carnal man look at the things of the world. The spiritual man look at Christ and, and say, oh, that ain't nothing because Christ supersedes all that. I mean, he's more than money. He's more than pearls. He's more than gold. He's more than your stocks and bonds. He's more than your job, than all your cars, your Lamborghini, and all this stuff that the devil sent at your mind on to make you think you're something. It does not compare to the treasure that's on the inside of the saints. He told the church we have this treasure. Sometimes the devil beat up on folks and cuts their eyes in the wrong place. They said they they so they so low esteem because they don't know who they are. I mean, they looking at what other folks got. Why come I can't get it? But you got a treasure if you believe for. What you loan faced it for? Why you down and out because they got a rejoice? Thank God that they got it. But you got to thank God for what you got. Be happy. You have a treasure. In this earthen vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. When you realize you're great because He's great, you got a treasure because He is your treasure. I mean, you found in him when he found you because you didn't find him. But you found in him a treasure. You found in him valuable things, things that give you life, things that give you victory, things that give you control, things that give you temperance, things that give you peace and patience. I mean, in him, we live in this treasure. It got something great in it. Y'all know when you get so great, the enemy come to steal. He come to, I mean, you know, oh my God, you know how we do with these natural things. We find out how to put alarms on it. And trust me, I understand. I've been stolen. I've had cars stolen. And you get stuff stolen from you. You be like, Lord, I know. Amen. But I tell you what, I wish I could find the alarm that shot fire off on the bottom. Then when they came up trying to take it, burn everything up. They're trying to take what don't belong to them. Because when you get stuff taken from you, make you feel violated. This devil is a thief. He come to steal. He come to destroy. Amen. He got ways and when he do it with the saints and with a believer, he gets you not to realize how great and precious what's in you is. He gets you to put disdain on it. That's how Esau was. What good is this birthright? I mean, I ain't nothing. It can't help me do nothing. I'm hungry and all this stuff. Look at here. No, 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 no. Jesus fixed all that. When he was hungry, the devil tried to get him something. He still wouldn't take what the devil had. Amen. Because his meat was to do the will of the Father. And so he didn't yearn for the things of this life. But he yearned to do the will of God. Oh, I come as it written of me in the volume of the book to do thine will. Oh, God. Amen. And at the end of the day, that's how believers are. Lord, I just want to please you above all else. I just want to get closer with you. I just want to learn how to walk with you. See what you see. Hear what you hear. You've been so good to me. I want to, amen, please you. I owe you everything. I owe you my life. I owe you my thoughts. I owe you my heart. I owe you my strength. I owe you my soul. Everything about me is yours. I, I realize I've been bought with the price. Lord, thank you for making me to know who I am uh, and who I belong unto. And because I belong unto you, you said no man can pluck me out your hand. If that be the case, then you come back and tell me I'll fight all your battles. Uh, why are you going to fight all my battles? Because you're precious in my sight. Uh, I gave up, I mean gave up everything to come down there and get y'all. I paid the price and didn't let no angel, didn't let Michael, didn't let none of the warning angels go do it. I did it myself. The ones that I created to serve and praise me, I come down and get you. You've been made lower than earth. I want 
watch you got walked on. I watch you got used and abused. And that still didn't prevent me from doing what I come to do for you. Now I made you the head and not the tail. I mean to tell you, I watched you and picked you up and placed your feet on a solid foundation. Amen. And I thought I've done all that. All I'm looking in return is for you to worship me and me alone. I just want a love relationship with you. I want you to come to know me because I watched you when you didn't even know there was a me. Now I want you to come and walk and live by faith and fall in love with me because I loved you way before you even knew about me. Amen. I loved you and called you with the holy calling. I called you out of the darkness that you might be sanctified. You ain't got to fit in with the world because the world is going to hell quick, fast, and in a hurry. But I called you out that you might escape the corruption that's in the world. So be strong, my daughter, my son, in the Lord. You got a treasure in that earthen vessel, in earthen vessels. Oh, that means, amen, no matter what come your way, that treasure can bring you through. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. Oh, if you learn how when you're blossoming from that chill, that children's state to the young man's state, you learn how to pray, you learn how to consecrate, you learn how to surrender your life to God. And I mean, you, yes, you do. You know how to, you learn how to present yourself unto God a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. You don't need nothing tying you don't even down. You say, Lord, I'm going to stay right here because I'm yours. I just want you to consume me. I don't want nothing that looks like me. I just want to look like you. Did I I get through every time you see me, you see yourself. You don't see nothing that resembles me. You just see you. You see your son. You see the fruits of the spirit. You see Christ in me. Oh, bless him. Philippians 4 and 13. Now, I know I'm hitting these because, see, we don't hear folks preaching on all this because they don't like straight. They don't like telling people. See, once we preach what's in the book, it's for you to go exercise yourself under godliness. You have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Make it personal. When you hear about God teach, after we get through teaching and preaching, you should see how great God is. After we get through talking about this tonight, you realize none of this takes place unless God do it. And so therefore, your allegiance, your thankfulness should be the one that did all this because you didn't have nothing to do with it. God came up with it. God called you out. You didn't call yourself out. He bought you out. You couldn't bring yourself out because you had no strength. But thanks be to God that gave us the victory through his son, Jesus. He got strength to keep you. He can keep you from falling. He can keep you from stumbling. He can keep you from backsliding. He can keep you from cursing. He can keep you from doing things that's in the dark. God is your keeper. He's more than able. Somebody say amen. Sister Tony, do you have Philippians 4 and 13? Yes, sir. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now all means I can live saved, I can live sanctified, I can do all things. I cannot have to live the way I used to live. I don't have to make the same group and blunders. I don't have to bow down to what I used to be bound to. If I had habits and addiction, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can praise him in the midst of my trouble, my trials, my storms. I can do all because he strengthens me. Now, I keep telling you, it, it pivots on your growth. He strengthens. He gives me strength. And I mean to tell you, you really come to know when trials come, amen, that all things do work together because the more they come and the more you stay fixed on Jesus and keep on growing, your strength mounts up within you. And I mean to tell you, you get an increase that only God can give. I keep telling people, your pastor, your preacher, your evangelist, that mother at the church, that deacon, that priest, he can't give you no height and neither can he give you no depth. That comes from God Almighty himself. Once he watch over his word to see how you're doing with the promises, see how you're doing trusting, leaning on him, hanging in there with his word, he watches you as you walk through down here sojourning as a pilgrim, not even belonging down here. He watch your reactions when you get among the, those that don't know him. He see if you're going to clinch up. He see if you're going to sit there and speak for him or he see if you're going to get small and get all ashamed. 
Brother, if you go through and please your father right in the midst of your enemies, he'll spread a, spread a table for you in the presence of them. And the next thing you know, you start getting an increase that only comes from him. And the increase that the church needs, Zion needs, the city of David, the new Jerusalem, the increase that we need, it comes from the Lord. And so when you look at what she's reading over there in Philippians 4 and 13, it said, I can do all things right through Christ. Now, it is personal. Because maybe the next sister or brother or deacon in there don't believe that. But you got to take it for yourself. I can do all things. I don't care if somebody says I can't do it. Look, man, if that's how you feel about it, I don't believe that because that ain't what the Bible says. I can do all things. That, that, that's why somebody got to be an example of the strength that this Bible gives. I can do all things because folks is always looking for a way out. They always looking to be weak, never to looking to be strong. Making allowance for all the loose and blunders. But Paul taught strong stuff that people can mature, people can develop. I can do all things. What he say through myself? Through Christ. Through Christ. Do he give me weakness? Strengthen it. That's strengthening it. Who? Everybody? Me. me. It's personal. He strengthened me. If you don't want no strength, I want it. If you don't want to be healed, I want to be healed. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, y'all can look on him and call him this, call him that. But I need to be healed. I need to be delivered. Amen. It's me, Lord, that's standing need. It's not my brother, not my sister. So what if everybody don't want the height, the length, the breath, and to go higher, and get more from God? I want more of you. Have an intensity of everybody else lackadaisical. They want all the natural things, but Lord, I want a closer walk. I want, I want to know how to go in and come out before your people. I want the wisdom that comes from above. I want you to guide my every footstep. I want you to give me what to say. I want you to take these hands that ain't nothing but clay and you touch them. I want you to take these lips of clay and you use these lips. You use this tongue to speak life because you are life. Here I am, God, that living sight. If I use me for your glory, that your glory might be revealed. He said, I can do all things. Let's read in scripture for you, Sister Tony Colossians 1 and 13. I know we're wearing out tonight, but this is the last one. And then we're going to plunge and then we'll be done. Colossians 1 and 13. Who have delivered us. Now this makes me want to shout. From the power of darkness. Oh God. And have translated us. Mm -hmm. Into the kingdom of his dear son. Who has delivered us. I could not. You could not. Deliver yourself. That's right. And after delivering us. He translated us. From one kingdom. Into another. From the kingdom of darkness. Into the kingdom of of his dear son, the kingdom of light. That you might be persuaded it's better on the Lord's side. Amen. I don't have to have no two minds about it. You know why? Because I've experienced the darkness. A lot of you know that you don't want to just be living in no house and you ain't got no light on. Amen. I mean, that's why we pay our electric bills. Right. We want this light. It's good to have light. We get dark and when you shut your eyes. It's good to have light. I'd rather walk in the light than walk in darkness. Some of our eyes getting bad. We need glasses and all that. Give me the light. We've been translated because of the hearing of the word that gives us now how to yield to what's in us. Know who you are and what has took place. When you say you are a child of God, when you say you are a believer, know what God has done. Because if you live any other way, you charge God weak. You make it seem like God can't. We done heard he can, we can. You make it seem like there's weakness in God when you don't think you can. When the preacher don't preach victory and he pats you on the back in your defeat, he ain't helping you. He got to let you know who you are. Israel was running from the lion. But there was one that who knew who he was and knew his God. That's right. 
and ran into the army. He didn't say, I come in my name, but I come in the name of the Lord. And he took down through God. It was God in him because he didn't see himself like a man the way Israel was seeing themselves as grasshoppers and little bitty people. He saw out of the eyes of God and look what the Lord done in him. I got to tell you, David didn't bring down the lion. God did it. Everything that's good that happened to me, God did it. Yes. Not you, he did it. You didn't translate yourself, he did it. You didn't save yourself, he did it. You didn't give yourself peace, he did it. He, oh, don't get me started. God did it. We got to realize if God did it, you got to realize you belong unto him. Know who you are that you might get to know who your God is. You're precious in his sight. God is counting on the church not to draw back because we're not of them that draw back unto perdition, but to those that believe to the saving of the soul. Oh, bless his name tonight. Amen. Amen. All of this, what we're giving you, are scriptures that you can go back and read. Now, tonight as we close, I just want to read something to you, and then we're stopping. Amen. I promise you. Finish shock you. Amen. First John, starting at verse 11. He came unto his own. First John 1. Not first John 1. Saint John 1. Excuse me. Saint John 1. And the 11th verse. Let me continue. Please. He was in the world because we talk about Jesus. And the world was made by him. Now we talk about God. Because God made the world. Right? And the world knew him not. So then if you don't know Jesus, you don't know God. If you don't know who Jesus made you, being an Aaron joint every Christ, then I can boldly say by looking at the inscription that's on your heart to the unknown God. See, those that don't know strength don't know God. Those that don't know victory, don't know hopeless, don't know sanctification, I can boldly say you don't know God. Because when you know who he is, you know who you are. Amen. And at the end of the day, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Now see, remember because he came unto you and you had good ground when he sowed that seed. Amen. Man, look what's about to take place. Verse 12 said, but as many, because somebody didn't want them, but as many as received them, because everybody not going to want them. Everybody don't want to be sanctified. Everybody want to want to live in the nature of God. Everybody don't want to live the lifestyle he called all men to live. Everybody don't want to know peace. Everybody don't want the victory because they have not made their mind up to come out the playpen. Amen. Which ain't nothing but the pig pen. Everybody don't want it. Amen. But to many as received him, to them only to them. Now, not everybody. Amen. It's only to them that receive what we're preaching on tonight. Gave he power. And that power wasn't to go get money. That power wasn't for you to go make your reputation for yourself. That power wasn't for you to go get riches, land, babies, wives, husbands, none of that type stuff. That power was what? To become the sons of God. You got to know who you are. That's what we teaching tonight. The come the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of God of the flesh, but nor the will of man, but of God. Amen. I'm stopping there. So what John began to say over here, to as many as received unto them gave he power, and that power was to become the son. You got to know who you are when you've been born again, when you get birthed, and when you come out of sin, get saved, become a new creature, become a Christian. Amen. Whatever you want to call it. When you get your fresh start, your new beginning, you got to know you've been given power to become a son of God. And when you become a son of God, you're different than a creation of God. See, the creature, the creation of God is born in sin, shaped in sin, and his very nature is again. That's first birth, that's what it got you. But that new birth that all men need that comes into this world after Adam, you need to be born again. Amen. I mean in born again, your spirit need to be changed. Your heart need to be changed that your soul might get saved. And that comes up on you believing the report, believing that Jesus paid the price. He's the lamb God gave. He made the ultimate sacrifice. Didn't no man take his life, he gave his life. 
life for you. Who would have done that the way you live? Who would have thought about doing that the way you cheated, the way you lied, and way you did? You know, it's an amazing. Everybody gets saved. I always talk about how everybody did this to them and everybody did that to them. You're going to forget you had your hands and stuff too. Look how you done people. Come on and quit playing all those pity games, sympathy games, and let God forgive you of all your sins you ever did and come on and run with him because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You've been given power to become a son and the sons of God don't run back into the world which God has brought them out of. The sons of God don't quit. They don't give in. I mean they suffered violence and they take it by force. They take the sword of the spirit. They take the helmet of their salvation. They take the breastplate and they fight a good fight of faith and because they fight a good fight. The enemy that stands before them flee. He runs from them and they realize uh, great is he that's in me that he that's in the world. That it is true I got something valuable when I got Jesus. Uh, so I'm going to learn to cherish him, love him every day. I'm not going to wait till I come to church to try to praise him. When I wake up in the morning and my eyes come open, I'm going to say, Lord, you've been good and watched over me all night long. You didn't sleep or slumber, but you watched me when I slept in slumber. You looked over me. Amen. When the devil slobbed and said he won't have me, you wouldn't let him do what he want to really do. Don't you know you got so much to praise God about? You got to praise him for the things you don't know he's keeping you from. If God would open up your spiritual eyes and let you see what the devil really tried to do to you today that you didn't come to know but he saw it and you got enough nerves to feel like you ain't got nothing to praise God about. I ask God to open up your eyes and let you see he's kept you from danger seen and unseen. It was God that had to open up Elijah's eyes when the man of God that came to know God. He was a full agent. He knew God was on his side and he knew who he was unto his God and he was praying because the trap was there and he realized look God send the rain send the rain and Elisha was sitting right there after watching Elijah bow his head between his knees and pray with a fervent prayer. It took the Lord he said go look he came back I don't see nothing. Go look again I came back I don't see nothing. And I mean to tell you Elisha was learning. Amen. Wait a minute. He keeps sending me something got to happen. Amen. And that last time that he went because he went with an expectation. Because he went with the desire to know and see what the man of God was praying. The Lord let him see a little bit. And he returned with the report. I see amen a cloud the size of the hand of a man. And I mean to tell you he came back because the Lord let them see. I see a cloud and the eyes of me say I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. And this is what God is seeking to do because when God start calling this church, amen, to grow, that is going to be an outpouring, a showering down of rain. And God, we're praying to send the rain. I mean to tell you, shower down upon Zion because we need another shift. We need a growing. We need an outpost. We need an outburst, amen, like never before that we can spring forth and blossom some light flowers and tulips because we can't do it without you. And that rain, amen, that God has saw, amen, that it's been a drought for so long. He see all the dryness, all the cracks. He see all the unprofitableness. There's no growth. There's no growth because it had been no rain. But look what the Lord is doing for such a time as this. He's allowing a word like this to come into your life tonight and to come into your hearing. And I can speak boldly into your life in the spirit that I see the cloud. I see a cloud the side of a fist, the size of a fist. Amen. That's going to let loose some waters upon you. Amen. Because he's seen your barrenness. He's seen your unfruitfulness. And now it's time because he called you with the holy calling and called you with the purpose. Too long the devil has tried to prevent you and stop what God got for you. But the blood of Jesus is against every demonic halt and every hindering spirit that has sought to come your way. And it's time now for you to come forth. Yeah, come forth like Lazarus did from that dead state. Jesus sent that word in there. And they said, no use now. He's probably stinking and he's dead. But look at the power of the word. He sent his word and called Lazarus. Come forth. And the next thing you know, that dead man, that man that had been dead and everybody knew it had to be God. 
He comes out of there. Amen. Praise God. Wakes up giving back life. What are you saying? My God, that's what the word can do for you. Although you might have been dormant, you haven't been doing what you've been doing. I mean, you've been sitting right there in the valley of death. But here come the word. Get ready to get signed up. Because he said, can these dry bones live? Lord, only you know. And after he said, prophesy, prophesy. You let them know what they are, even though they don't look like that. Then they was looking at the army of the living God. Looking like dry bones just laying there dead. Twice dead, pumped up by the roots. Yes, that's how many people are. Ain't been used by God in the service, in the sanctuary. Always going in looking at the praise team. Letting them do all the praise. Where did all this stuff go from? That's why I like the man when he got saved and got delivered. And Peter and John got through with him. He wasn't waiting on the praise dancer. He ran in walking, leaping and praising God because he knew God had done something for him. Could nobody else do what nobody leading him out how to praise God. And all this stuff that we're doing just has made those in Zion get comfortable. Looking at somebody do what you should be doing. Looking at somebody talk about your God and you should be talking about your God. Looking at somebody talking about I can't sing like them. God ain't worried about how they voice sing because he wants you to give it to him for what he's done for you because can't nobody praise him for you like you because don't nobody know like you know what the Lord has done for you and God don't care if you break a couple notes and I mean your voice crack if you sing unto him and you can't get in the choir. It seems like they don't like your voice, but in the eyes and the hearing of God, he loved to hear you praise him. Why is that? Because he saved you. He chose you. He picked you. Come on, you just got to know who you are in times like these. I'm done. I'm done tonight. I pray that something's burning in your soul tonight. Don't you never give up on God. Know who you are in God, that you might know who God is. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this word in such a time as this. Thank you for this love message that you might give us to know that we got a treasure on the inside. That we got a gift on the inside that if we really get involved with you, that we can stir it up and call to remembrance former days in which the church was illuminated. And here we stand tonight as a servant and vessel of the Most High to encourage your people everywhere. That they are victorious. It's you that causes us to triumph. Mm -hmm. Going from victory to victory. Causing us to be who we are. Never let us forget, Lord, it's because of you. We're great because of the greatness in us. Not because of us. Because we've been us before without you. And wasn't nothing great about what we did. But now that we are the sons and daughters of God, look at us now. Thank you, Jesus. you have given the church dominion, power, and might. All because of you. Thank you for the treasure Thank you. that's on the inside. Bless your people everywhere. Comfort your people by the power of your spirit. Fall fresh again in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Continue to pray for us. Show us your gratitude, your love. Amen. With your donations, your word of encouragement. Amen. Your prayers. Amen. You keep praying for us. You go with God. He'll go with you and you pray that God bless us to go with him. And mount up in us like never before. Till we see each other again. God bless you. And we love you.